um, carried. Okay, uh, Mr. Mohi. What time would you like us back, Jim? I suspect we would, when we finish the open session, we'll break for lunch. So, um, does that work? One o'clock at the at the latest. We possibly going to be quicker than that, but we'll never know. Okay, that's fine. Okay, um, Mr. Moy. Yes, uh, first of all, thanks to the councillors last year to approve the submission from the Māori Council, uh, Māori um, Committee, to take the um, some of the Māori Committee meetings out to the various uh, outlying taipanoa. Uh, and as a result of that last Monday, the Māori Committee and councillors uh, Scott, Pipe and Barker uh, attended the Māori Committee meeting held um, at the Wairau Community Centre. Uh, you're a ton of <laughs> um, the, um, the gathering, uh, and especially the Māori Committee members, uh, the Wairau Co Māori Committee members, were actually quite flattered um, that uh, councillors had made the effort, in, in including the chair, uh, the CEO, and um, James and uh, Ian and Mike Aidy as senior managers just to go there. Um, as someone that's lived out uh, the other side of Pucky Bucky, um, where sometimes the Napier and Hastings um, councillors think their boundary is, um, we always have to travel in right from primary school to um, attend sports events and, uh, and meetings. And um, they were flattered that um, uh, the team had made the effort to go there. Um, and we had a warm welcome and uh, a lukewarm lunch. Um, majority of uh, issues being spoken from the floor um, were about um, forestry issues, uh, major concerns with um, slash after um, harvesting, uh, not only in uh, Kopuafara at uh, near Mahia, um, and they were assured that um, we would get back to them in terms of um, our meetings with forest companies and um, agreements that um, would impact on, on that sort of major concern for them. Um, the Wairua River and the flooding of the Wairua town um, wasn't as big a subject as um, was when the councillors visited Wairua um, a couple of months before. Um, and it was quite ironical that the um, report about a mitigation package for the flooding of the of the town and the opening up of the uh, Wairua River mouth written in uh, by a much younger Mike Aidy for the, in the year 2000 that was actually presented um, last Monday and actually nothing had changed. The reality is that the population is um, around about 5,000 people. Um, of the working community, um, half of them are on benefits, and the mitigation package packages, the various packages that were outlined in his report in the year 2000, um, still were the same. The, um, sorry, can I just repeat that last couple of sentences? The re report drafted by a much younger Mike Aidy in the year 2000 was basically the same, and um, it, it outlined a some uh, mitigation packages, uh, most which were well beyond the um, uh, the locals in terms of uh, being able to cover the targeted rates. Um, the Wahi Dam w was covered, um, certainly not with the um, the strength of feeling that was shown this morning, uh, because there was only one or two people from that uh, area. But it is of huge concern to them, as well as the Mahanga. Um, um, Coastal settlement there, just near Mahia. Uh, concerns from uh, two very vocal uh, ladies who came along and um, um, outlined their views and uh, took assurance from Viv afterwards that uh, and um, Ian that we would be getting back to them and just inquiring as to whether consents were given and just how that um, um, some of the changes to boating ramps, etc., at um, at Mahanga had come about. So uh, very short, uh, very enjoyable. The next um, Māori committee meeting away from uh, these <coughs> chambers will be in um, uh, Tamatea Taifenua in June. Thank you. 
So just to, on the forestry slash issue, the, the Mayor of Wado and myself uh, um, working up a letter to send to Minister Smith in regard to forestry slash and the, uh, the pending issue, not just in Wairau or Gisborne, but actually right around the country. So uh, we've got a team working on that in the background, and uh, when that day comes, we'll, uh, we'll have something more to say. But uh, I, I think the strength in the meeting was the fact that uh, it was very well received uh, by local people, but also Wairau District Council uh, and the Mayor's, you know, we, we've, we're aligning some of our views on where, where we should push together to get outcomes, and I think that's been a great, that, that was a great part of the day for me. Uh, questions, Mr Mohi, those that weren't there, because they had the wrong date in their calendar. Yeah, uh, firstly, <laughs> apologies, I had the wrong date in my diary. I've had to be on bended knees, and the cohort, Mr Mohi, has had to double. But um, but what is very pleasing that uh, our chair and the mayor Wara are on speaking terms now, so that's one really good thing about all this. Um, I, I was um, actually wondering, um, do we have a um, meeting scheduled with the Hastings Māori Committee? Are they part of our committee? No, no, we're meeting with the various Māori oh, committees. We're moving around. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure whether that's scheduled to be in Hedatanga or Hastings uh, or in this uh, chamber. So I'm, I'm not quite sure. Because this year yeah, we'll only have three meetings because of the um, election in October. So I know one of them is in. in um, sorry, four, wouldn't it? Four, one's already been held. One's going to be in um, Tamatea. Um, yeah. Yeah, there might be. Yeah, you'll be able to come to that one. Just a, a final comment, which I shouldn't repeat, but there was a photo in the Wairau Star of the mayor and myself uh, experiencing a hongi, but they cropped everyone else out, and it looked like. Um, well, I'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> and there was no description of hongi underneath the photo, and I've been getting a fair bit of grief since then. I might add, but uh, anyway, all good fun. All good fun. Further questions for Mr Mohi? Someone happy to move, we accept that report. Thank you, Councillor Scott. We have a seconder for that. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bevan. I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Oh, do you wish to speak? Sorry. I, just, you know, I just wish to say a couple of words. I, I attended, I had to leave a little earlier, but I just thought it was a fabulous meeting. I thought the engagement with the local community was outstanding. And whoever dreamt up uh, the uh, this process deserves to be patted on the back. Uh, <coughs> Uh, it was it was uh, uh, really good, and I felt it was the most worthwhile Māori committee meeting I've been to, and I look forward to them. Uh, and I I hope that the next one we have with uh, uh, if it's to be uh, in this area that we shift out of this council office and go somewhere else. So I thought that was the other advantage of it. It was a different com different location. People turned it up, felt comfortable, a really engaging conversation. Great. Thank you. Okay, I'll push that, put that motion. Then all those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, no. Carried. Uh, monthly work plan looking forward. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Well, all the uh, key staff are here to answer any questions that you may have on this. Rather long report. OK. <laughs> questions. Who's going to kick us off? Uh, Councillor Belford. Um, item number 61, groundwater. Analysis of water use data reveals it's of limited value. Alternative methods, what's, what's that all about? So part of the uh, <clears throat> working up of the modelling is an understanding of actual water use. Um, so we rely on a variety of methods including uh, metre data and we have a bunch of historical information that is furnished to us through manual uh, recordings and or web based input so it's kind of the users providing the data to us themselves and what we're finding is that that's got um, holes or errors in it that makes the value of the data less valuable than the stuff we're getting from telemetry so we're finding that we, we've got some holes in our data around that and we're looking for ways to, to, to fill that up to, to interpolate the information. The implication is this is this with respect to the Heratonga or is this Region wide. It's, look, it's a re it's a national issue. Um, until the advent of um, telemetry at an affordable uh, price, and and or in fact re uh, regulations for metering, 
we relied on estimates uh, and or manual reads of meters which we're finding nationally are um, variable in terms of quality. So what we're trying to do is provide for the modelling exercise the most accurate information we can which is often a combination of meter records and or some calculations. Just a supplementary question to that. Um, at the water forum that I attended the past two days, um, uh, a guy from the South Island got up and talked for 40 minutes on establishing standards for data collection um, by councils. Are, are we involved in that? Have we, do, are we trying to apply some sort of a standard for this? So yeah, we, we're donkey deep in that. Um, so Lawa and the EMA project, Environmental Monitoring Reporting Project, has generated this issue that nationally we have an inconsistent approach to capturing you know, hydrometric data and or water use data. Um, that makes it difficult then to aggregate it up and report it. So there is a, a project that sits within the EMA process called the Federated National Data Process to look at ways of standardising the data formats, in the nomenclature, uh, you know, the bibliography. What, so, so when we're talking about a litre of water used for irrigating apples, it's the same in Hawke's Bay as it is in Canterbury or Gisborne. So, so there's a real effort within the sector to try and get that alignment, and our staff, particularly Jeff Cook, um, are, are right in the midst of that. I did second question on number uh, 80, the last page of this report, refers to the REDS process and um, uh, implying that there's an action plan now that has to go to the central central government. What? What's that? Why? Why is our regional development plan? Where does it stand? First of all, and uh, it's been long overdue at this point. And what does central government have to do with it at this stage? Upon completion of the uh, first draft of the Red Strategy, um, dialogue commenced with central government around their uh, participation, partnership, funding, support, etc., uh, for implementation of the strategy. At that point in time, the um, uh, view from the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment was that uh, there hadn't been deep enough engagement with Tangata Whenua in the development of the uh, strategy, and so uh, the collective uh, councils were asked to uh, reinvigorate their dialogue uh, with, uh, with Tangata Whenua on that. Uh, we have supported that through some funding to Ngāti Kahununu, and they have, uh, I think they've got one hui to go, but they've held two already. Uh, across the region and uh, are running a process to uh, further develop their input into the strategy with respect to Māori economic development. So that's happening right now. Uh, in, in parallel, a, a dialogue happened uh, with uh, Minister Joyce recently who visited the region and uh, with central government officials and they have sought an action plan uh, which is essentially how do you translate the strategy into a bunch of things that central government may uh, in indeed be able to respond to. Uh, some of the actions might not relate to central government at all and might simply be for, for local government or other partners. Uh, and so they have funded uh, uh, Alistair McLeod to uh, continue uh, working with uh, the interagency project team to uh, develop up an, ac an action plan, and that has been uh, drafted over the next couple of weeks. So we're maybe a month away from seeing some of this, or? I, I think a month's probably a reasonable time frame. And, the, and by that time, it's sounding like what you're saying is that there would be ingredients of it that would have already been, I guess, uh, trial balloon to central government in terms of funding support? So I th I, there's an iterative dialogue going on and uh, MB is represented on a regular basis in the region checking in. So uh, I think it's a useful way of testing central government appetite with, with some of the proposals that are coming forward. But they will formally go up through the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the chairs uh, and mayors uh, in, in the fullness of time through the chief executives as well. If I, if I could add to that, um, you raise a very good point, Councillor Balfour. Um, there is a series of work streams happening around the country. There has been a report done here, oh crikey, five years ago, uh, part of the economic growth strategy, if you like. Uh, so I think it's quite important that we do send this back and do make sure that we are engaged uh, with central government on this issue because they do seem to be keen to uh, resource, you know, some activities going forward. I know the Horizons region, Manawatu, have got a program on 
primary production increases as an example, which the council and, and others are part of. So, I, I, yeah, just to add a bit of flavour to that. Just following through on that, the, we have now made this submission, or a group uh, of various players has made a multi-million dollar submission as part of the MB process for regional research institutes. That was filed earlier this month, I believe. Uh, and we've given some support to that process. Uh, uh, but is that something that will ultimately be noted or be perceived to be part of this broader economic uh, strategy? Because it also relates to the previous item, 79, because a lot of its grounding is on finding value-added investment opportunities <coughs> in the food and beverage, I assume that's what F&B is, um, sector of our economy. So there's strong synergies between um, the, the two initiatives and there's no reason uh, I can see why um, the uh, regional research initiative um, uh, can't, be f can't be folded in under the, the broader strategy and action plan. Having said that, um, MB is running a separate process and, and we'll wait and see and if we don't get through the, uh, the first gate and get uh, approval to go through the business plan stage, I guess that's where that proposal w w will end. Thank you, Chair. Um, I firstly note on page 43, um, the first sentence, consultants continue to develop um, Hawke's Bay Regional Council HBRIC alternative proposal. I just wonder why we've got HBRIC in there, um, because they're nothing to do with the railway. We've had a lot of talk about that and they don't do anything. So uh, you don't have to answer that unless that's not just make that comment. Um, the other one, on page 44, um, coastal um, strategy, I'm really looking forward to that report. I think it's hugely important for, for Hawke's Bay. Um, I have it on really good authority that the government think that our coastline around Napier is the worst in New Zealand to be affected. We are number one in the uh, very worst category. So um, getting that out is hugely important to um, to everyone in Hawke's Bay, how are we going to, and especially uh, sort of the strategy, how are we going to protect the residents that are going to be hugely affected by that. So I just want to make a comment about the, the importance of that. Um, and also, um, not 18, um, this is my um, core competency, and I'd really like to see the discussion around how we um, involved in the IP partnership with Convita. What are our rights? What are their rights? Because um, as everyone's aware, I think it's a huge opportunity for high country in Hawke's Bay. So just want to put that on the, pa I have said it for, so before, but really keen to have a discussion with people in here um, because as I say, that's my core competency. I'm also um, really interested in 48. Um, how good is this? You know, I mean, we we got two terror. We have some people saying that we only way we can fix it is drain it. Um, um, is this technology on that we can actually develop um, a substance for absorbing phosphorus? Yeah, forty-eight. forty-eight. So, sorry, the question, is it, is it on or is well, it real? Well, is it, is, it, is it real and, you know, is it, I mean, even if it's next decade, that's sure. the kind of technology yeah. that we want to get involved in yeah. from an environment because it's taken us 150 years to, um, yeah. to do this damage. Yeah. But I've always thought that technology might get us out of it. Yeah. And is this it's, real? I guess like any, any technologies, it's advancing and it is becoming more real. The challenge is is once you've effectively flocculated out or captured the phosphorus in water and it's bound to the agent that you, you've captured it with, you then have to recover it, otherwise it's, it remains in situ. So, you know, for example, wastewater treatment plants don't only capture and flocculate the phosphorus out on some sort of material, but then they remove it from the waste stream before it's discharged. So there are still challenges, but... Not just putting blocking paper down there that's special no, in the no, it's, These things are never that easy that oh, you, you can't just sort of drop it in there and it magically evaporates, there's still some yeah. mechanics around how you then deal with but the stuff you've captured. But absolutely. And, you know, uh, in relation to Tutera, the um, number 47 speaks to that a little bit and what we're contemplating is bringing some information back to probably the ENS or the RPC to sort of update you on that 
Waikato University work, which is starting to really sort of signal now some um, uh, options for dealing with, with the lake, bearing in mind that there are no quick fixes, but um, certainly options that are being developed that are, that are real. Um, Mr Chairman, economic development again. Um, I have some discomfort about uh, all these parallel work streams that are happening uh, around and about the, the, the REDS review and the action plan for submission to central government, um, which is in many, many instances replicating and duplicating work that's being done by, for example, um, the Transport Committee in terms of its regional uh, land transport strategy. Um, and, and just the fact that there's, you know, we're not joined up. And this whole business has been going on, in my view, for far too long. Uh, so I'll look forward in anticipation of things actually coming together and us, us actually being informed as to what what is proposed. Uh, I mean, we had that, that meeting with Business Hawks Bay at the Century Theatre last year, which quite honestly didn't really achieve anything very much. So I'm disappointed um, and I just think we've got to be very vigilant that um, we don't have different people doing the same thing and at the same time not really talking to one another. That's just an observation. Um, further to that, I see that you establishing new protocols with the Hawke's Bay Chamber now that it is some contract subcontracted to HBRC to provide services for the program. Uh, the program being the RBP, whatever that is. Can someone tell me? Regional Business Partnership. Okay. Um, my question is, does Jenny Brown still work for us? Yes. So, the, so the, oh, sorry, James, I've probably got a little bit more background than him on this. Yeah. Um, um, yes, yes, she does, and she is still the the, um, uh, the member of staff who's overseeing that relationship with the Chamber of Commerce. Essentially, what has changed, and the only thing really that, that has changed, is that whereas previously the um, the contract that Callaghan oversaw with us was with both Regional Council and with the Chamber, uh, when it came time to renew the contract, Callaghan indicated their preference for having one organisation to contract with and thereby another to that would then be subcontracted to to the to to us effectively. So they wanted to contract only with us rather than with both organisations. So it's really just a change in the contracting arrangements. Okay. Well, well, that's fine because in fact, officially, we are still the regional economic development agency. That that's never been changed. Um, and I'm pleased to hear that um, Jenny is still with us because she's a particularly good operator. Full time based down at down at the hub. Um, so that's why results. you probably don't see her. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but just, just finally, uh, these acronyms and so on that, that you know are, are littered through this report. If a member of the public actually wanted to read this and make some sense out of it, they'd have some trouble. So I'm wondering whether you think about a glossary of acronyms as a appendix to to this report or somewhere in there. Thank you. Further questions, Mr. Moy. And just in regards to number 84, uh, Councillors Barker and Graham still representing the council at the Komatua, um Iron Māori this year. I, I believe so, uh, Mr. Moy. Yeah. I'm a boot camp. At the moment, right now. <laughs> Further questions. <laughs> so I'm happy to move that we accept that report. Thank you, Councillor Bevan. We have a seconder, and I thank you, Councillor Balford. Any discussion? Move a second. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, 